In this video, we're going to talk about convexity. Uh, this is a topic that's going to show up uh, again in later uh, videos, but for now, I just want to define what convexity is for you. And with just like with duration convexity, there's two types. There's a Macaulay convexity and a, Maca and a modified convexity. So we'll talk about both of these. Let's start with Macaulay convexity. Uh, this is the general timeline for uh, uh, that I want to work with, and I, I kind of want to tie it back to first. Let's uh, remember, let's recall what Macaulay duration, uh, how we would cal calculate the Macaulay duration of uh, of such a set of payments. Uh, remember what we do is in the denominator we take the present value of the payments, and then in the numerator we take uh, we take uh, the time of the payment, multiply that times the amount of the payment, and then discount it back. So I've highlighted the little change in the uh, slight change between the process of calculating the numerator versus the process of calculating the denominator. I've kind of highlighted that in red. Now technically the definition of the Macaulay duration is uh, of the set of payments is that it's a weighted average of the times of the payments where the weight assigned to the payment at time t is equal to the present value of the payment at time t divided by the present value of all the payments. That's a mouthful. I don't really go through that thought process when I'm thinking of Macaulay duration. I just really go through the process of actually just doing the calculation. Uh, okay, so now let me highlight the difference between Macaulay convexity and Macaulay duration. So I've got the definition of Macaulay duration on this slide. If I change that definition to the Macaulay convexity, it's also a weighted average with the same weights. It's just now I'm taking the weighted average of the squares of the times of the payments. So the Macaulay convexity, uh, the process in the numerator, instead of taking the time of the payment times the payment amount and discounting it, I take the square of the time of the payment and I multiply that times the payment amount and then discount that. So in the shorthand notation, I'm going to need a t squared in the sum and in the numerator as, as that factor instead of the, the cap t. So that's it. That's just the, that's it. That's all you do. It's the same. If you can calculate the Macaulay duration, you ought to be able to calculate the Macaulay convexity. It's just you're squaring the time of the payment instead of just taking the time of the payment itself as one of the factors. Okay, so that's it. Let's move on to modified convexity. Uh, in order to talk about modified convexity, let me remind you of the definition of modified duration. So it's the negative of the derivative of the price function or the present value function as a function of the interest rate divided by the, uh, divided by the function itself, divided by the present value uh, function itself. Uh, recall that the present value function as a function of the interest rate is a decreasing function. As the interest rate goes up, the, the, uh, the, the, the present value of the payments is going to go down. And so that's why that negative sign is needed in that numerator because the P prime, because it's, cap P is a decreasing function, means that mathematically that's, uh, we capture that by, by saying that the derivative is negative. So cap P prime itself will be negative, so the negative in front of the cap P prime is needed in order to ensure that we have a positive result. Uh, and again, I, I should mention that I'm, all of these cap C values, these payments, I'm thinking as positive amounts, and and so uh, uh, the the present value function there is a, a decreasing function. Uh, of the interest rate. So uh, the cap P prime is negative, so the negative in front of that makes the numerator a positive and, and the result is, is positive. Okay, so the modified convexity is just an extension of this idea and we extend it by taking a second derivative. So the modified convexity is defined to be the ratio of the second derivative of the present value function as a function of the interest rate divided by uh, the present value function in the denominator, just itself in the denominator. You don't need a negative because uh, the second derivative is always going to be positive. In other words, uh, you know, from a calculus standpoint, the, uh, the, the, the graph of y equals cap p of i is going to be concave up. The, uh, the second derivative is always going to be positive. So that's it. That's your definition of the modified convexity. So uh, commit those to memory, and, and uh, uh, they're not, not hard to, uh, I don't think that they're going to be dif very difficult to calculate. I don't think you're going to see, um, you're not going to see uh, problems where you have too many payments, where you have a whole bunch of payments. You're not going to see so for something, for instance, like calculate the uh, 
Macaulay convexity or the modified convexity of a of a 20-year bond with annual coupons. You're not going to see something like that. It might be a three-year bond at most, maybe a four-year bond with annual coupons and so, uh, you know, four payments at most. So very short number of payments. Let's look at an example. Uh, I'll show you an example. Oh, and I should have mentioned I, I, in this slide, I just added that uh, what the, the present value function was uh, as a function of the interest rates, just the present value of the payments as a function of I in terms of I, not, not in terms of V's, not using V notation, but using I's. Okay, so let's look at this example. This is an example that I talked about when I introduced the concept of, uh, uh, of duration. First time I introduced the concept of duration, we talked about this example. And I mentioned then, I'll repeat it now, I'm thinking of this as being like a three-year bond where the first coupon uh, payment is 10, the second coupon payment at time two is 20, and the third coupon payment at time three is 30, and then there's a redemption value of 1,000 at time three also. So I can group together the payments at time three, say, oh, well, the total payment at time three would be 1,030. So for this, for this timeline, for this set of payments, let's use a 6% interest rate, uh, uh, periodic effective interest rate, and determine the Macaulay convexity for part A and the modified convexity for part B. So for part A, this is the Macaulay uh, convexity. And again, I don't really remember it this way. I just go through the process, the denominator, take the present value of all the payments. And that's a 10 times V plus 20 times V squared plus 1,030 times V cubed. And then in the numerator, instead of taking just the, uh, the time of the payment times uh, the payment amount, I take the square of the time of the payment. So that's why I got the one squared times 10 times V uh, and then I add to that 2 squared times 20 times V squared, and then plus 3 squared times 1,030, discount that back to times 0 by multiplying by a V cubed. So that's it. Uh, you know, using a 6% uh, periodic effective interest rate means periodic discount factor is 1 over a 1.06. And if I did the calculation correctly, uh, just plugging in a 1 over 1.06 for V, I got a 8.8. Uh, 8.15 number as the Macaulay convexity. Okay, so now let's look at the uh, modified convexity. So for the modified convexity, I've got the definition here. I need to talk about, well, what's the, uh, what would be the cap P of I function here? Well, that's the present value. Just take the present value of the payments uh, not uh, and use I's instead of V notation. So generally, it would look like something like this. So in this particular case, I'd have a 10. Uh, the present value of payments would be 10 times V, but I don't want to use a V. I want to use a, a 1 over 1 plus I or 1 plus I to the minus 1. So the present value of the 10 would be 10 times 1 plus I to the minus 1. Present value of the 20 would be 20 times 1 plus I to the minus 2. And and then the present value of the 1,030 is you've got that written, you know, there also. Okay, so that's what P of I would be. Uh, I'm going to need a derivative of that. So just take a derivative with respect to I. Use the power rule to, to take a derivative with respect to I. And uh, that's this is what I got. And then I need a derivative of that derivative. So again, use power rules for each term. So the first term would be a 20 times a 1 plus I to the minus 3. Uh, second term would be a 120 times 1 plus I to the minus 4. And, and the third term... Uh, I had to bring out my calculator for that, but that would be a 12,360 times 1 plus i to the minus 5. So I've got expressions for the second derivative and the first derivative. Second derivative is in the numerator. First derivative is in the, I'm sorry, second derivative is in the numerator. The function itself is in the denominator. So now I just need to evaluate these things using a 6% interest rate. So plug in a 6% or 0 0.06 for i. Uh, in that uh, in the expression for cap P of I and I got 89204 and then do the same thing for the uh, plug in a 0 0.06 for I in the expression for uh, cap P double prime of I and I got this 9347 9, 9, number uh, so take the ratio of those two numbers and and that's it that's what your uh, that's what the uh, modified convexity would be for this particular set of payments Okay, so uh, I will see you in the next video.